Hey guys, Mordan here and today I'm gonna show you Tree of Savior. Tree of Savior is an authentic MMORPG often referred to as the spiritual successor of Ragnarok Online. The game is designed by Kim Hakio, the lead designer of Ragnarok Online from 1998 to 2001. Tree of Savior features 2.5D graphics with anime style characters, which aims to allow players to fully immerse into the fairy tale environment of the game. The cartoony graphics might not be for everyone, but personally I really enjoy the contrast to all the sandbox MMOs we have seen in the past. The sound in this game is great and I enjoy listening to it. It kinda leaves you warm and with a retro feeling inside. Think back at the days of Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy and Zelda. And now we get to play those games in an MMO world. How cool is that? Tree of Savior starts with four base classes, Swordsman, Cleric, Wizard and Archer. Those classes can be advanced multiple times, creating an extremely complex character customization system. I will explain this system as well as the stat system later in this video. Let's move on to the most important part about the game, combat. The combat of the game simply feels great. TOS is a hack and slash MMORPG and it does that part particularly well. It is simply fun to kill monsters in Tree of Savior and, warning, even very addictive. What stood out most in the combat for me were the bosses. Each boss so far has featured unique mechanics, a variety of different attacks that you have to avoid, phases where the boss takes extra damage and shooting projectiles that require fast reflexes to dodge them. Soloing dungeon bosses is very fun, but can be quite challenging. If you're looking to ease the difficulty a bit, or if you're a very social player, you might prefer to group up for them. Nevertheless, it's always an extremely satisfying feeling to kill a boss. There are also world bosses that spawn from time to time, where players receive rewards according to their participation. For instance, damage done, healing done, etc. Negative points are the character creation, where you're only able to change the hairstyle and gender of a character. In addition, new item upgrades are hardly noticeable visually, and in town the game sometimes lags, which shouldn't happen considering the relatively low system requirements. The game is heading for a simultaneous global release, which is unusual for a Korean game and definitely awesome for us. Ok, and now I'm gonna show you some of the game system and customization options. Now here with my character, as I said before, there's gonna be four base classes, the swordsman that I'm playing, the cleric, the wizard and the archer. But those base classes can be advanced to other classes. You see for example I started as Swordsman, but now I'm also a Highlander which gave me new skills. Now let me explain this system with a skill calculator. Um, that's probably the easiest way. Now here I see a skill simulator and we chose my class here, Swordsman. And you can see in rank 1, as you level you get points that you can put into um, skills here. For example, um, I leveled Bash, one point here, then I also got Concentrate which is a um, DPS boost that you can activate and I'll get some points in Pain Barrier. And then once you reach level 15, you have the opportunity to advance your class. Now in order to do so, you go to a special class trainer, he's gonna like say okay you're ready for a quest um, and gives you a quest. And once you complete the quest you can choose what you do with your character. For example, I got the choice to either go more into Swordsman or to go into Highlander or Peltasta. Now, Swordsman and Highlander are both um, offensive classes and Peltasta is a defensive one. Um, the first two are also like categorized as easy to play, the second is categorized as medium skill required. Um, you see all that information in game like when you level up like what each thing does. And Highlander specializes in two and a sword so I went for it. Um, put some points again and then once you reach a certain level again you are ready for rank 3. And rank 3, what do you think I'm gonna get? Well, no question. Um, and then at rank 4 you can also get different. For example, if you wanna specialize more into Barbarian, you can do more into Barbarian. And then as you see here, um, when I specialize first in Barbarian, I got access to 4 Barbarian skills. But then in the next level, it's the same 4 Barbarian skills, but that they can make stronger now. For example, Aggressor. Um, here I can only put 5 points into it, but then I can put 10 points into it, which increases my crit chance and crit rest and also duration of the skill. Um, Warcry is here, um, which temporarily decreases the defense of enemies and adds to attacks, so this is really good also in group play, um, because it boosts the entire party. And then um, here I got even 2 more skills, for example, like Giant Sing. And then rank 6 you can choose between Centurion or Doppelsoldner. 
Um, and then, for example, you can also get a Cyclone, which is could be like something like Whirlwind, I don't know. But yeah, you see like the customization options here are endless. I mean, here even if I only make one change here to like Swordsman, then like I can make a completely different um, tree with completely different skills. And if you keep in mind that there's four different base classes and each base class is the same um, advancement system, there's a lot of theory crafting to be done in this game. Now let me show you some things in game now. As I said before, like um, there are the skills here. And um, there's also passive attributes that you can learn, which I'm gonna show at the end, because um, I need to go in town for that. Um, but you can see here, I started Swordsman to put points into one point into Thrust, which is a single target DPS skill, you can see here. And it's categorized as physical damage and a stab. And what this means, for example, is um, there are certain skills that interact with other certain skills. So, for example, if one of my group members stuns him up, um, then, for example, stab could be doing 20% more damage. And, for example, like a monster might be like weak to physical damage or might have extra resistance against physical damage. And that's really um, what's going to make up all your skill setup. Bash, on the other hand, is an AoE skill. And I'm going to quickly demonstrate this um, against some monsters if I can find some. Um, let's go up there. Bash is pretty uh, strong AoE skill, it does a lot of damage and... Oh, there's actually an event here now. Good, let's go for it. And it's actually a boss. Oh, I did not expect that. Trying to um, use all my skills here, of course. I need to get rid of the ads first. Okay, there's something coming at me. So I'm canceling my attack with a jump. And going back on the boss here. I have no health potion, so I gotta be extra careful. You can see he is doing some AoE. Where he landed. And I'm gonna save my mana now in case he spawns ads again. Okay, did an attack here. You always have to be constantly moving against the stuff that it does. And yeah, boss fights always take a long time if you're solo. They are fast if you play in a group. But yeah, I'm probably gonna fast forward this now. And we are done. Um, I showed what I wanted to show. I got 3000 silver here from that. That's pretty cool. I got a new class skill. Um, let's try Wagon Wheel. Which is ra use weapon to raise and blow away enemy. Sounds pretty cool. I want to test this. Also lock your slots. You can also like add new keybinds. Like there's so many keybinds you can add. But I want to test this seven skill now. Whoa! 400 damage crit. Okay. Plus the enemies were blown into the air. It's pretty cool stuff. But yeah, um, what I wanted to show as well is the character information system. Now here you can see. Um, different stat points and each time you level which is in the bottom left and there's also experience scrolls that you can use for example that increase your experience here you get them usually for quest rewards you can also find them you see i got some experience now um but for example if you put points into strength increase your physical attack crit attack and max inventory constitution of course that says hp and dexterity which is what i want to focus on is accuracy so you hit more often evasion so you dodge enemy attacks and crit attack and you can see already i have a crit attack rating of um, 21 and a crit weight of 21 and that's already pretty decent like crits are very strong in this game and yeah you see all the different attacks like you can for example um, I have a gem here um, which adds magic attack to my weapon but you can also add fire attack or something um, defense is pretty much the same um, each monster has a certain type of attack or different ones for example fire ice and you can gear your assistance against that um, 
the same with um, normal defensive stats, for example, as physical, like it's against every physical damage, magic against every magic damage, AoE against every AoE, and then you have evasion to dodge damage completely, you have block to make it reduce time, you have crit resistance, um, it's pretty much like there's a lot of stuff here, and um, monsters have a certain type, there's five types monsters gonna have, plant, beast, insect, mutant, demon, and you also get bonus damage against this. Um, don't know if I have a right now one of those items. Um, I don't think I do, but yeah. Uh, this just gives you a basic idea of the um, customization. Um, there's blue items, there is... For example, this here is a blue hammer. You can see this adds magic attack and attack on medium type. Um, it adds 13. And then the boots give me 10 stamina. But yeah, um, that's just what I want to show. There's another thing I want to show. Um, if you're low on HP, you can set a bonfire. For example, you see, my HP doesn't regenerate. And it's really hard to regenerate HP in this game. But what you can do is, um, you can sit down. Then you get different options here. And one thing you can do, for example, is build a bonfire. Um, which you can't build here in this area. Let's see if I can build a bonfire. You need a place with no monsters and stuff. There's two people waiting here, so I think here should be fine to build the bonfire. And there we go. And now you see my both my MP and my HP are regenerating much faster now. Um, you can also here, for example, um, start item crafting. Um, you can craft a certain item by um, inserting the materials that you need. You see here my two recipes that I have right now. Um, here, for example, one for gauntlets, epic gauntlets, and I have a recipe for a rare um, bracelet. Um, yeah, but there's also other stuff. Oh, hey! I was regenerating HP and this guy attacks me. Are you fucking kidding me? He's gonna suffer for this. Gonna test my new skill again. And he's dead. This skill has a high crit chance, it seems. And range attack radio, so it actually has some kind of range. Okay, let me sit down again. I was at gem enhancement for example here I can put down a gem and add it to one of your gear slots you can see this is not always positive for example you gain five magic attack but you use 50 mana points and so on um, so it's kind of like a trade-off that you have to do with this um, and then there's also a card system where I can play um, cards against other people for example I got one card here for defe defeating a really strong boss that I showed earlier demon type and yeah now we're gonna go to town I'm gonna quickly show you um, the passive skills and so on what you can do with your skills now to go to town, you can either use a warp scroll or you can use, if you prefer, um, this item here. It's kind of like a hearthstone in WoW, 20 minute cooldown, brings you to the main city. And yeah, I mean, cartoony graphics, as I said, uh, might not be for everyone, but I personally enjoy the graphics and the look of the game. Also like how the game plays, how it feels to play it. Um, but you gotta find for yourself if that's something you like or not, because as I said, the game is gonna be grindy. Um, it's not like it's not made to be get like level 500 or something just by questing. Like sometimes you have to kill monsters in a zone or form a party and then stand on a grinding spot for one or two hours, maybe even six or seven hours, and get the nice experience in. But yeah, here you can see a Swordsman Master. And he, for example, gives me the option, like there's even more customization options. So it's not just the skills here, the class advancement, the character points and so on, no. Here you also have to make another choice, okay, which skills do you want to advance, how do you want to affect. For example, this here um, increases the amount of bash damage by 1% per attribute level, and the attribute level you can do here. Then thrust, bleed, for example, enemies that are stunned fall under bleed for 5 seconds when attacked with that certain skill. Um, that's just like all the combos that are able. For example here, when using Frost, repetitive or repetitive attacks get activated by 1% probability per attribute level. So um, if you use that, the more you stab in the same enemy, the more damage your next attack will be. Um, again, like this is just like basic. You can also like purchase here a weapon swap, weapon swap, but you need to be swordsman level 2 for that, which I probably won't be. And yeah, um, pretty cool stuff. There's also one thing, restrain slow, for example, if an enemy is stunned, due to restrain effects, will be in slow after stun gets removed, so we'll increase by 3 seconds per attribute level. And, yeah, as I said, like, that's just some basic um, options. There's also an adventure model where you can see this is kind of like um, 
a system that shows like how many monsters have you killed out of all monsters in the game, how many items have you crafted out of all items, map exploration, you know this one well for work of achievements, but achievements have an own um, category here. Um, for example here you can see defeat 10,000 monsters, achieve 10,000 overkills and so on. There's also then character titles, greetings and an in-shop um, where you can open your own shop and list items for sale other people can click on it and, and um, see it. And yeah, that's pretty much the interest, most interesting things. Um, quest system, you can here check the quests that you have. Um, also interesting is like once you complete the quest, let's say you're in an area and you complete the quest, then you can press, press backspace and teleport right away to the quest giver. So you don't need to do anything, the backspace um, teleports you right away. Um, party system is pretty complex. Um, but very easy to use. For example, here I see some parties that are listed. For example, I'm currently level 23 or something, and I could join this party, for example. Um, you can list like what your party is about. For example, this guy needs help for crystal mine bosses, he's looking for certain classes, and so on. Also good for uh, find groups or dungeons, and so on. Then there's a friend system and companion, but companions are pretty expensive, at least for me right now, I can't afford one. But it's also something that's in the game. Same with like a uh, macro and all symbols, because communication is pretty big part in this game, I mean it's even more, you gotta play with other people, like if you only wanna be, play for yourself, I mean it's still good, because for example I never joined a party until yet, and I can solo dungeon bosses, um, but it also requires you to play well against the bosses that are, have sometimes like complex mechanics and are hard to dodge, but if you are really a good player, then you can also play the game solo, without any problem, um, yeah, um, also interesting is this here, this is the goddess statue, and this is used to um, teleport to certain areas. For example, um, I have four or five waypoints already and I can just um, click on that and then I'm gonna go to the goddess statue in that certain area. Um, what is also important is, there's a different type of statue that increases your skill or stat points. Yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show here for now. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little overview of the systems. This is one of the most anticipated MMO action RPGs. Now it's not exactly a WoW killer or something like that, but the game is fun in its own way. Playing the game and killing monsters is fun, and actually reminds me back in the days when I was 15 years young, playing Ragnarok Online and Secret of Mana. The game is very polished, boss fights are challenging, the music is excellent, and it even gives me the old Diablo 1 feeling of, one more level please man, I'll be back.